Hey folks, it is Vince the Evil DM. I'm back with another episode of Railguns and Dragons. This time I'm going to be talking again. We're going to be going further along in the High Seas book, uh, as you can see. I'm sitting here at the table and uh, wanted to talk a little bit about curses. Now, if we turn to page 46 of the book, there is an optional section for curses. With the first edition rules for Palladium Fantasy, uh, there was... El it alluded to, it kind of talked about curses, and it talked about how priests can uh, remove curses from items and people, uh, much like, you know, its counterpart, D&D. &D. But it really didn't give a lot of examples for curses, or didn't give a lot of ideas for the GM, mostly, to uh, make up his curse. So you had to make up your own curse until you got this book, or you found it somewhere else, or you just took it from another game. Myself, I've been playing for so long that I really didn't even remember that this was in this book, to be honest. Uh, a lot of the times the High Seas book is overlooked in my campaigns because I mostly just focus on the core rules. And then and when some people want optional things here and there, I'll start pulling out other books and using things as I need them. Because I'm mostly a GM that likes to make things up on their own, which is, again, another reason why I like the original Palladium universes, so to speak, or the Megaverse itself back before it was merged with Rifts, because everything was kind of not defined well, left up to the GM to make his own thing up and do whatever he wants. But we go to page 46, and it talks about the curse and how it works and the mechanics of the curse, and it gives you some ideas of what you can do and how what's the percentage that it will be cursed, the item that the player, pick, the player character picks up. And I think it's... Actually, really excellent, and I'm really surprised I never paid more attention to it because it did a lot of the work for me as opposed to me making it up. When I was running my game, which I still am, playing Fantasy 1E, uh, one of the beginning adventures at RollHireDie.com, you can listen to it there, one of the players picked up a cursed dagger. And I didn't put too much of a big curse on it. It was like a minor curse because I just wanted to, you know, introduce them to the world and how dangerous Palladium fantasy can be. And this is not D&D &D 5e when you're superheroes. So the player grabbed the dagger and then I instantly told him as soon as he touched it that one, he loved the dagger. Two, he didn't want anyone else to touch the dagger. Three, he started to sweat when people would start asking him about the dagger he would get a little suspicious. He would get a little antsy. All he knew was this dagger was the be-all, end-all in life, and he thought that the dagger would pretty much do whatever he wanted it to do. It would be his weapon of choice now all of a sudden. Uh, I made him nervous, sweating. So those were the side effects that I gave him for that. It turned out to be pretty funny if you listen to the episode uh, as the player, other player characters figured out that this dagger was cursed and wanted to get it away from him because they knew there was something wrong with their friend because he was acting nervous, he was starting to sweat. When they say, what did you find? He would say, nothing, nothing, and try to hide the dagger. And it turned into a whole big Benny Hill uh, scene going on as they were running around this dungeon after finding the dagger, trying to get the dagger away from this character who has an excellent dodge mechanic for his character. Uh, so he was basically dodging everybody, running around, and it was a lot of fun because the player rolled with it really well. Uh, he did role-playing very well. I gave him extra points for role-playing and playing it all out until they were able to wrestle and get the dagger away from him. Now, according to the rules, going back to the whole purpose of the curses here, just because you remove the item from the player character does not mean the curse goes away. For me, I did it as soon as the item went away, the curse basically was subsiding and he would, you know, start to feel normal again. With the rules, it can <laughs> stick with you for a long time. And you would need to go to a priest, uh, or pretty much a priest, uh, who would only have a pitiful half percent per level to actually remove this. And so they give, they give an example here, a 10th level priestess or priest or alchemist uh, of 10th level or higher has a pitiful half percent per level of experience to temporarily counter the curse of the supernatural power. And they give you a little chart here to roll on when they do actually do it. Let's see if I can get that for you. 
as you can see, the curse can also, even if they do get that percentage, the curse may not be lifted for that long. Unless they get 100%, then it's lifted in forever. Now, probably the only way, according to this book, to actually get rid of the curse itself is for him to give away the item purposely, which he's probably not going to do this dagger that I gave, back to the dagger example, because he wants it. Uh, somehow gets it stolen from him, then the curse is removed because someone else now has that curse. The item is somehow lost. Maybe he falls... Um, Maybe he's running from someone or running from an adventure and he falls overboard on a ship or over a cliff. Falls down, his backpack gets tossed, things get flying out, the item is gone. Suddenly he scrambles to look for it when he gets up or gets out of the water, he can't find it. After a short period of time when he realizes it's lost, and I would hold the character to this, or I, would say, I would hold the player to this to search for the item as if it was your item. Like anything else, like if you lost your phone, for example, you know, or you lost your glasses and your eye case, you will go looking around for it. It's your item. You lost your favorite pencil, for example. You would search for it. You wouldn't be just like, oh, well, I lost my phone. Got to get a new one. So any player that does that with their character, obviously, as a role-playing, will not get experience based upon that situation at all. And as we know, Palladium likes to reward people more for doing other things than combat. Sure, you get experience for combat, but as I explained in the video before, they reward more so for role-playing and doing things. So, of course, the player is going to act upon that. Now, if they do that, they lose it, they can break the curse. Now, it does go on to say that the priest, priestess, Alchemist can remove the curse from the item itself, but that is a lot harder to do than uh, the actual removing the curse from the person. So it's easier to remove the item from the person than try to remove the curse from the person. And then they go on to tell you the common, commonly, or the commonness of the cursed items. Religious artifacts and relics are usually 30% cursed. Royal artifacts or heirlooms are 9% cursed. Ancient elven weapons and artifacts are 12% cursed. Cursed. Ancient Dwarven weapons and artifacts, 10%. Holy weapons, 20%. Lesser rune weapons, 15%, but only one curse. Sometimes you can have multiple curses on different items, depending on the item. Greater rune weapons, uh, runic weapons, 30% have one curse, 18% have two curses, and 10% have three curses. Most cursed objects, about 70%, will affect anyone who owns it, regardless of the character's alignment, race, or allegiance. Royalty, family, clan, whatever, it doesn't really matter. However, some, about 30%, are specifically designed to affect only those of a particular alignment or race or class or allegiance or religion or whatever. Runic, rune weapons, holy weapons, and religious artifacts are the types of items that most commonly found to have curses designed, directed to specific, specific alignments and other conditions. And it has a random curse table uh, with some ideas for you. And I'll show you that little table right there. Right there. So it gives you an example of things you can do for curses. Like you can do hallucinatory noises. Uh, there's a chance of everything happening. Reduce vision while you're having the item. Uh, spoilage. Basically any food that you come near or touch or something starts to go bad suddenly. Uh... Rags causes armor and clothing to basically be cursed, starts to tear, break faster, rot away. Reduced healing for some reason, you can't heal like you normally did before, even by magical means, because you're cursed. Confusion you drop your IQ points temporarily while you have this item. You get a vulnerability on your saving throws against magic or psionics or something. You can also become hatred of different races or different classes. Uh, you may stink. <laughs> you may walk around smelling weird things randomly and not know why. And maybe you, as a GM, can really play off of that with the character. You get random headaches that cause you to do negative do attacks because you're constantly going, oh, my head, you got migraines, things like that. Again, like I said, just like uh, <laughs> you're attracted to insects. So you like, you know, maybe you like that cockroach that's crawling around the dungeon with you. 
you glow. Maybe your body starts to glow. Your flesh starts to glow. Things start to break around you whenever you use them. Like your sword suddenly just breaks. Or, you know, maybe the chair you sat on breaks. <laughs> Cravings. Maybe you get a sudden craving for some type of food or some type of illegal, uh, some type of substance or drug or something, which Palladium has a whole bunch of drugs that actually are pretty interesting. I may go over that in a, a separate video because I always find these things very interesting to do. Uh, confusion. You know, you lose your IQ. Oh, I did that one. Sorry. <laughs> uh, heat. You'll always be uncomfortable, very hot, cold, glowing eyes. You'll mumble. It's just a guideline for you to use for making up a curse. You can do whatever you want with your curse. Like I did with mine. I gave him, you know, nervous tics. I, he gave him, you know, he was uncomfortable. He was talking faster. Uh, he wanted no one to touch the item. That's not listed there, any of that stuff. I made all that stuff up. You can do whatever you want with your item. And you don't even have to roll to build the curse. This is just giving you a this, this book, like any role-playing game book, is an absolute guideline, not the be-all, end-all. And I can't stand when people are like, no, but the book says, it doesn't matter what the book says. Sure, the book will give you a guideline if you have no idea what you're doing, which most people who come to the game sometimes don't have an idea what you're doing. But after a while, you make up your own stuff to have fun. Again, as long as you're upfront about everything with your, your players and your group, about how you're going to change things, you're going to make up your own stuff, and they're all cool with it, then it doesn't matter as long as everybody's having a great time. So tell me uh, some fun curses that you've done in the comments below, because I'm always interested in hearing about curses. I, I love doling out curses with magical items. Uh, I do like the fact that they added a little bit of percentage to uh, the actual randomness of cursed items, so it gives you an idea uh, what the percentage is. And of course, in your world, you could change that percentage to something else. Like you can make all magical items happen to be cursed by a certain demon lord or a certain uh, devil lord or a certain high magistrate person in the far kingdom has cursed all the magical items in the land using some type of weird spell that now is part of your adventure that the players need to go find where he is and find a way to reverse this spell, otherwise all the magic in the land will be cursed. Something like that. It could be easy as that. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video. Uh, don't forget to comment as well. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. And don't forget, if you'd like to join the channel, you can join the channel by clicking the join button and support the, me on this channel. Or you can go to ko-fi.com slash the evil DM and buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, as little as, I think, a dollar or something if you want to donate. Uh, for the work that I do. Or you can, I think, PayPal. I think there's an option link. If you go to theevildm.com slash support, I have a whole bunch of different options that you can choose as low as if you want to just throw me a buck, like a tip jar. Okay, with that said, I'm going to head out. Keep it original. Keep it old school. Good night, everybody.